open up the VT150 and find out what's wrong with the rewind. So let's get this top cover off. There are screws inside. There are some covers in the way. These side screws. And there are, uh, there are some screws on the back. Starting on the back. I have my handy bowl to keep all my parts in. And we start to take off the back parts. Wrong screwdriver. Always use the right size screwdriver. This piece is broken. There's one more bit of it here. Classic, classic failure. Alrighty, no problem, we'll put that there. Alright, this back part is free. Alright, on this connector, there's a plate with two screws. This plate apparently has to come off. Jack Bay, same deal. All righty, strap screws. And this is just before we get inside. All righty. Ah, something fell out. It's a dust shield that goes over these two slide switches and belongs to this piece. All right, the monitor connector, two screws, and a plastic insert. All righty, two tiny screws for the monitor connector cover. Righty, the first thing we need to do is to pull this cover from the head drum. And it is 1 16th. Alright, fortunately you only have to loosen that. There is a metal roller that will have to be unbolted that is preventing the top cover from being removed. We'll have to put that back in order to test. I'm going to have to take off this metal roller. All right, I'll flip that over like that, put it here. Okay, that is clear. The next obstruction is the pinch roller, which you just unscrew the top. Don't lose it. And lift off the pinch roller. I believe all obstructions to the top cover being removed are now are now one, two, three, four, five, six internal screws to remove the cover. These are chrome plated and I'm going to lay them out as I go. All right, I have one screw that is spinning freely in here. Apparently whatever it's attached to beneath is loose. All right. <laughs> oh, and I love you too. Okay. I did not need to take those three screws out under this lip. I'll put that back in a moment. All righty. We have a switch. There's a, a sensor wire that when the machine is in player record that touches tape. That's how it knows when the tape runs out. Well, that needs to be carefully worked down through a slot as you bring this cover up to clear the sensor bail wire. This part should have latched, and it does. And we'll put it aside. 
I'm putting this back. Okie dokie. I'm going to use two of these screws temporarily to hold it in place. Alrighty. That turns freely enough. I see my culprit. I'm going to rewind. Something's wrong. Alright, I was wrong. It's not rewind that's the problem. It's play. Yes. That thing is slipping. That's slipping. I need to remove some belts in order to get these get these wheels out. So I will begin with the counter belt which is a small diameter belt and then there is some form of an idler belt here which of course makes no sense but all right that frees up the roller in question which I'm virtually 100% positive is, is shot. Alright, these uh, clips these that are, form, are normally known as C-clips are also known as Jesus clips because when you unclip them and don't hang on to them they go flying away and the usual response is Jesus! But Jesus isn't interested in helping you with these. He's very busy I suppose dealing with real problems, or at least problems of greater magnitude. Alrighty, we have this nasty out, and it is not good. I'm not going to touch that with my fingers because I know it's going to uh, leave a mark. I'll demonstrate this way. That is rot. That is good old rubber rot. This wheel may have even been treated with some form of rubber restorer. And it's in sorry ass shape. Okay. That's one problem. Here are the two parts that I have to repair. The first is the real platen. It's hard to see, but the uh, the bottom is split into two rings, and uh, each one is for a different purpose. One is for fast forward, and the other is for play. They have felt pads in there that allow a certain amount of slippage. And the bottom ring is the ring that comes into contact with the rubber tire on this guy. Well, that rubber tire is just starting to turn to snot. It's in a bad way. It's disintegrating and has left a sticky, nasty, tarry residue on the uh, lower rim of the uh, real platen. So I'm going to be cleaning the goo off of that. Okay, now we're going to clean up the lower rim on this, on this real platen and I'm going to try using alcohol to do that. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll find out. Well, it's certainly not failing. Here's what I've found so far. The rubber on here is goop and uh, does not sit in a uh, channel as I expected. It's actually bonded to the outer part of the rim. So it needs to go for professional rebuilding 
and uh, that is exactly what I will do and uh, hopefully we'll be putting this back in in part two so moving right along I've cleaned up the spindle to the point where I'm satisfied that the tension the upper ring which has the cork pad coupling to the platen is nice and tight the lower ring which has a felt pad and a pressure spring uh, is coupling to the upper to the upper puck just fine also so there's nothing wrong with this part uh, it was simply covered with goop from the rotting rubber roller so it's been cleaned up and now I'm going to put it back into this machine <laughs> 